Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on where you are. I'm Eric Schumacher Rasmussen. I'm the editor and VP of Streaming Media. And welcome to the third panel of the first day of the seventh Streaming Media Connect. We're glad you could make it. And uh, we're glad to be here with you. We hope to be with you in person in Boston in May, May 24th and 25th for Streaming Media East as well uh, as the Content Delivery Summit, which will be returning in person on May 23rd. Lord willing and the crick don't rise as someone's grandpa used to say. Uh, and in fact, that's particularly germane to the topic we'll be addressing over the next hour, Edge Delivery. Content Delivery Summit, of course, focuses entirely on as it says in the title, content delivery. But we've got another great virtual week that we're kicking off here today with more than 20 panels, as well as a terrific workshop on Friday called The Best Streaming Gear and How to Use It. You can still sign up for that one if you haven't done so yet. And all of our sessions will be available on demand uh, a few days, maybe a little uh, longer than usual this time uh, after the live events are done. And just for being here, you're entered into a random drawing for an Amazon gift card. We'll announce the winner at the end of the hour, and the winner will get an email notification about how to collect that gift card next week. I'd like to thank our diamond sponsors for this entire week, Bird Dog and Harmonic, and we have a couple messages from them right now. <laughs> Before we jump into our discussion on edge delivery, a few house, housekeeping notes. If you have questions for our panel, please enter them in the Q&A tab at the bottom of the screen rather than in the chat. It's just easier for us to keep track of them that way. Also, we do have subtitles turned on. If you want to turn them off, go to the bottom of your screen, click on live transcript and select disable transcript. I would also like to, like to thank the sponsor of this panel, Zenlayer, and Zenlayer's Jim Zhu will be joining us in just a moment. But first, our moderator, Dom Robinson, all the way from Brighton, England. Dom, hello. You're there in the dark. Hey, Eric. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. And you? Very good. Excellent. How's the, uh, how's, how's the morning? Or, or well, morning, I suppose, your time. Uh, for yes, the it, was, it was morning our time. Terrific. <laughs> uh, yeah, we had a couple of great sessions, a keynote from Google TV and a panel about the state of codex in 2022 so we started off with a bang perfect Excellent. well we were so up I'll to monday to four so yeah brilliant yeah. let's take it away so we're monday four we're uh, into the uh 2 30 eastern time session called over the edge maximizing efficiencies and improving quality with edge delivery so two of the biggest buzz phrases uh, for half a decade but edge delivery and edge compute have finally come of age uh, if you're not considering edge delivery for your OTT service, you're missing the boat and so are your viewers. This panel aims to examine how the edge can improve quality of service and impact your bottom line. So there's the script. My name is Don Robinson, uh, director and co-founder of Ideas, a software company that focuses on delivering uh, platforms for SaaS operators delivering live streaming at scale. Uh, I've also long, uh, long in the tooth as a contributing editor for Streaming Media Magazine and for the last few years been uh, privileged to chair and program the Content Delivery Summit, which we'll be um, coming back to later in the year. With me today, I have two excellent panelists to uh, to help us understand uh, the edge in the context of media. We've got Abhishek and Narella from uh, A&E Networks, and we've got Jim Shu. I'm gonna ask them to come to the mic one by one and introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about what it is that brings them to the panel. So let's start with Abhishek. Abhishek, tell us a little bit about yourself and what brings you to the panel. 
Thank you, Dom. Um, hi, everyone. Um, very nice to be here. Um, yeah, this is my um, second stream here at Summit, and um, you know, always found value uh, attending these. So, um, you know, in my current role uh, with AE Television Networks, uh, my team is responsible for um, the end to end video streaming, uh, encoding, and delivery of um, streaming video uh, that powers um, both our AWARD and SWARD uh, offerings. And, um, you know, of late, um, edge delivery has been talked about um, so much. Um, and, you know, we've, we've, we've started making, uh, you know, exploratory ventures in, into that area. So, um, you know, just happy to be here. Lots to talk about, brilliant, excellent. And Jim, are you out there, sir? Hi, good excellent. morning. Nice to be with you. Excellent, great to meet Yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about uh, about, about Zenlayer and your role and what brings you to a panel on edge computing. Sure, thanks. Yeah, my name is Jim and the principal engineer at Zenlayer. Uh, for now, I'm leading the distributed edge cloud and also the, we call it a global, Cloud network as well. Then there, basically, we are an innovation company, uh, specifically on the edge cloud, edge cloud business. And uh, in the past half of years, besides the layer, I was working in other leading companies uh, in developing those edge computer platforms as well. Um, besides okay. the working companies, I also uh, currently I'm sitting in the LF Edge board member and try to get more familiar with those uh, community as well. Perfect. Excellent. All right. And a quick word to all the uh, all the attendees who are tuned in and listening. Use the chat room. I'll keep an eye on it. Um, if you've got a specific Q&A, get it into the Q&A. Uh, and as well as I can, I'll relay that to the guys and uh, and, and uh, we'll, we'll get your get you involved in the discussion. So uh, I'm watching as far as I can. Um, but I think a great place to start with a panel on edge computing uh, and edge delivery is let's have a little, uh, let's get a collective frame of reference about the terms. So to each of you, uh, what, what is the edge? Uh, Abhishek, let me start with you. What, what's the edge in your mind? Well, for, for uh, you know, for, uh, you know, content creator, producer and, uh, you know, someone who's Providing the video experiences to the user, uh, the edge is uh, probably the, uh, for us is the closest that we can control uh, the delivery experience. Um, you know, before before we uh, before the video hits the client, so um, you know it's very um, you know it's it's probably a last it's like a point of no return. Uh, you know, it's like an event horizon kind of thing. So, um, but. You know, it's 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 very important, um, especially in, in in this day and age where you know that this this live streaming and there's latency and there is uh, you know all different uh, videos being consumed on different platforms. Mm -hmm. And Jim, for you, where, where's the edge? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. So actually, with recent years, there's a lot of people are starting to talk about edge, and uh, I'm as I was sitting as I am sitting the LH board members. We also have a clear definition of what is the edge. Somewhere in the industry wise, people talk uh, edge quite vaguely because some people say that anything between cloud and consumer are edge. But uh, I think come from LF edge board, we talk about edge like there's a consumer edge, there's an enterprise edge, there's also carrier edge. But uh, by using those terms, it's good, but still kind of uh, not quite clear define what we call the edge. From our company point of view, what we call edge is basically the point where there was a low, lower latency combined with lower cost for the service delivery, like a video delivery and a kind of, kind of service delivery in the case, and also can be consumed by the customers. That's what we call edge. Okay, so, there's a, so there seems to be uh, some consensus that it's a kind of a, a, the limits of the scope of some responsibility and, uh, and at the point of handover to the next uh, next stage of the delivery chain, so that might that scope might change depending on 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 the on the service owner, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, so why why is the edge piece important to people delivering content? We, we, we've touched. We, I've heard some mention of low latency. I've heard uh, I, I, I've heard a few other terms there. What are the key benefits in getting content deeper out into the edge? Again, Abhishek. Yeah, I mean, uh, given um, you know the diversity of our uh, audience, um, especially uh, um, regarding where they're consuming content from, um, different different regions of the world, um, on on different devices, um, you know, different times of the day, 
um, it's it's essential uh, for us as content uh, producers to uh, ensure that the video quality uh, remains, uh, you know, as as great as possible for our consumers. Um, so for us, um, everything that we can do to uh, maximize uh maximize this experience uh be it by reducing latency or uh you know or, or reducing bandwidth um you know that the, the client is using um you know every little bit helps and you know the edges is is, is 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 like again like i said it's a, it's a last layer which we can uh which we can actually control and jim for you your, your clients must be deploying services out to the edge what, what are the um uh, you know, what are the key, key key performance indicators, the key things that they're looking to gain from deploying into the edge? Yeah, so uh, Zendaya as an infrastructure provider the companies, we are supporting a lot of uh, customers in the edge content delivery uh, business. And we, what we heard from them is basically latency is definitely one of the key um, parameters they are looking for. But the, beyond that one, they ask, actually, uh, they are looking for the whole service delivery. I think Abhishek mentioned about the uh, user experience. That's the that's the final I think uh, word they can compete with each other and the, to make customer be able to appreciate the contents. And in order to do that, definitely uh, they try to utilize the edge in the case. And then in the in order to do that in the edge, they, that they're looking for lower latency, high performance, and also higher throughput, and uh, all other kind of uh, agility of the service as well. Those are all the things they are looking for. It's basically combined of kind of a lot of services added into the edge. And they believe edge will help them uh, achieve the, what we call the user experience in the case. So uh, lots of benefits to media workflows. Any, any, any particular standout? You know, I, I think back to uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago when I was running my own CDN, we used to think that we were sort of some of the, I suppose what you'd call some of the first clouds, but we were very inside out compared to the cloud. We were uh, in, in not data center centric. We were all about having lots of pre presence in many locations. So in some ways, I look at the CDNs as the very first edge computing environments and precursors to the clouds. The clouds then have evolved the business model and the flexibility and the dynamic uh, use cases that you can apply into that environment. And now we're looking to accelerate those back out into the edge uh, uh, and uh, uh, meet higher demand in a more de decentralized way from uh, from the, the the core computing mode. Um, why do you think that this type of decentralization strategy uh, benefits uh, operators? Is it going to be useful for small publishers with high value but niche content? Or is this something that's really only for the Netflixes and the Disneys to be worried about? What, what's, what's your thinking there, Abhishek? I think it'll be it'll be useful uh, for everyone, um, uh, you know, be it small, uh, small publishers or large publishers. Um, but one thing you, you can if, if done right, it can certainly bring down costs, uh, costs of delivery, um, you know, using by efficient use of caching and, and those protocols. Um, and it can it can also drive new viewers to your platforms uh, if, if you provide engaging uh, video viewing experiences. Um, plus, you could you could do uh, a lot more uh, customization and personalization, which is possible. Um, you know, uh, you know, using compute at edge, um, you could you could essentially tailor uh, video delivery for every individual user. Um, you know, consuming content at any given point in time. We're going to deep dive into some use cases. I know you've got up your sleeve there, uh, Abhishek, a little bit later in the conversation, but just uh, sticking with this kind of idea of who, who's the customer, if you like, here, the um, uh, Jim Fu, the, the uh, you know, is, I was asking a minute ago that about the size of, the, the sort of size of audience and whether this is, this edge computing is something that applies really only for very big broadcasters or if it's something for only very small broadcasters or for, 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 for everyone. How are people coming to Zenlayer and, and using this and what sort of size uh, or what practical applications are you finding uh, 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 of value to people seeking edge compute with their media? So uh, the typical customer from, um... In our cases, uh, actually could be big company, could be small company wise. It's not just one size fit all, mm -hmm. mostly this way. So uh, the reason for that one is, uh, I think um, with recent uh, last decades of cloud uh, business expanding, the more content is actually hosting in the cloud. That's for sure. 
So, but the same time wise, those co the custom base is expanding rapidly as well. So those two uh, kind of development create the gap in the middle to see where is the best custom experiment can happen. So that's where the edge cloud, edge computer coming in into the picture. It's not something we invent. It's basically come out by the demands from the market. And that's where we start to see the business come in and the support us as well. And that's where we see. And also in different recent years, besides, uh, besides uh, us as, as a kind of edge cloud service providers, so also other companies are acting, uh, actually try to get into this business as well. For, uh, for, for example, like some of the uh, leading cloud service providers are on the way to coming into the edge. Some like uh, data center providers are coming to the edge. So that's uh, is what we can leave it crowded, but uh, we would like to see the, how the business will be happen to support uh, uh, how the growth of the industry. Um, and I, I, Jim, just to stick with you for a second. So do, would you think that the edge is sort of something like a premium cloud service in terms of how it's provisioned to uh, consumers? Is it that seamlessly integrated? Do I just dial my service up in my, in my public cloud infrastructure and magically push it out to the edge? Is it, is it that easy at the moment or uh, are we, have we some way to go before that, that deployment's that easy? Ah, you touched some very interesting topic. So I think today, uh, we do uh, see the edge cloud as, as computer as kind of a premium service compared with the public cloud. But they've got the efficient wise, uh, there are some gaps we need to improve further at the, at the edge. The also provisioning agility of service delivery also need to be improved. But I believe with the leverage of cloud technology or all other technology wise, the edge cloud will be mature, will be much better than today. That's where we're heading to. Perfect. And Abhishek, I mean, you know, you're fairly full stack as a as a consumer of these types of services. How are you finding the availability of these these uh, edge cloud services? Are they coming through cloud operators? Are they coming from telco? Are they coming from a different uh, strata altogether? Are, are they widely available? Is it easy to deploy? What's your sort of thoughts and experience? Um, my experience so far has, has been like primarily working with like uh, cloud providers and CDNs um, specifically um, and leveraging what they've what they've got to offer. Uh, but, you know, I, as, as, um, you know, I see this maturing, uh, you know, quite quite a bit in, in the coming days. And, uh, you know, it, it, it could further extend down to like ISPs or, you know, uh, you know right, right down to the last mile, uh, you know, right before the client. So where are you, uh, just just stay with you there, where, where, what, what are you finding the distinctions are if you're going through, you know, your, your, your public cloud provisioning API or your console and so on? Is there a point where you're sort of running along developing your system and there's suddenly a gap and you've got to go to a third party provider and work out how to deploy this, whatever it is, this container, this pod, this, this, this service uh, out to the edge? Is, is where, where, where is the, the, the line for somebody designing one of these services and contemplating with the edge? So for us, um, the experience has been like mo mostly like working with our uh, with our CDN providers, uh, you know, in deploying these applications um, to the edge, uh, you know, baking in our own uh, business rules in there, uh, you know, for certain compute decisions that need to happen, um, and also like uh, you know handling like platform specific uh, requirements, um, particularly as we deliver across a multitude of platforms. And Jim, Jim, you, 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 do you include services such as uh, serverless computing and uh, and uh, and so on within your within your concept of the edge proposition, or are they outside? I've I've heard people uh, um, running sort of lambda esque services and considering that edge in some cases because it's kind of outside of boundary, but the network purists might consider that's not really edge because it's not really deployed in depth in the networks. It's, uh, it, again, I'm, I'm trying to dig for where that distinction for somebody used to developing in the cloud might find that leap or a gap or a stepping stone to, to start really deploying edge. That's good questions. So uh, I think I have some background about distributed uh, computing as well. So in our mm -hmm. edge, actually more than just uh, the networking part, we also have a, a lot of computing resource provided at the edge. So the edge is more, definitely is more than just Lambda for the IoT. 
So in the previous, uh, my previous company definitely I touched on like edge computer for the IoT, but we found that that's definitely not enough for us uh, to meet the customer demands. Video is definitely on the way to provide more valuable information uh, than just the other things as well, especially for the live video, live stream. That will provide kind of more interactions. That's why people mention about the, met the metaverse, those things coming in in the row, and that will have more demands, more requirement for the edge, for the video delivery as well. And that's where we see. So coming back to the edge resource wise, it's a whole infrastructure. It's kind of like cloud infrastructure. Uh, is we will need uh, customer will need will need the uh, networks will need uh, some computing capability. We'll also need some kind of storage capability as well. It's just um, it's just worth picking up on the metaverse uh, model there. You know, there's the, the, these. I think to broaden that out a little bit into uh, maybe include ultra low latency and gaming. I think they're kind of a co close set of cousins in 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 the context of edge computing. Um, are you guys uh, supporting these services or experimenting with these types of services as well? Are you, you know, I can I can imagine groups of people using very intense computing, but localized temporarily for a, I don't know a metaverse meeting or a conference call or some sort of ultra low latency tool, maybe like Zoom, something deployed to the edge on an ad hoc basis and then torn down again once the sessions ended. Are those levels of uh, uh, of media technologies that you've been deploying and, and, and playing with uh, or reading about or learning about? Where are you guys at with deploying these things outside of specifically video delivery? Um, or one way of uh, delivery, so. <clears throat> um, You know, from our perspective, I mean, like uh, we've, uh, we've looked at uh, things like, uh, you know, uh, watch parties and things like that you know uh, where you could uh, you could have like social viewing of uh, content together um and uh, um we, we haven't we haven't fully operationalized any anything of that nature but i can certainly see the edge playing a, a, a big role there um and uh, you know also i mean like a personalized uh, personalized video content delivery for um, say individual users uh, you, um, you know, is, 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 is a big thing, big thing for us. When you, when you say personalization, per, personalization uh, of what sort of depth, just, in, you know, server-side advertising insertion or localized advertising, or do you mean richer content? I'm thinking sort of, I don't know, uh, yeah. Richard, There's Richard. Source of innovation out there. Yeah, yes, but, uh, and on what fronts? I mean, like, um, you know, starting from like surfacing of, uh, you know, you could essentially put your recommendation engine on the edge, um, uh, right? And and then uh, you could, um, you know, conceivably have like, um, you know, the, a code in there talking to services like, uh, you know, say that the, the trending topics on Google at, at, at any given point in time uh, at that user's location, um, right? Mm -hmm. And then you could, you could surface uh, content which is mo most relevant uh, to what's going on in that particular user's location. So, um, you know, things, things of that nature. Brilliant, excellent. Jim, talk to us a little bit about these kind of more diverse uh, models that are out outside of the linear video, if you like, or outside of the video on demand and the live video space, what, what other models have you seen emerging in the edge? Uh, besides the metaverse, I think uh, uh, it's basically as you will form a big collaborations. So in the past of years, people are kind of pushing the information to the cloud. So the data wise is, is owned by the cloud companies. So down the road with, with Edge coming in, become neutral kind of providers, it will enable more type of business. They able to share, collaborate, and utilize those kind of resources. So that's what we thought as well. So that's kind of go back to align with the, the area you mentioned about the decentralizations. So that will form kind of a new type of business, definitely will make content able to deliver across the system more, more uh, easily and also rapidly as well. Mm. And you mentioned you've been working in the um, RF space as well in the, in the, in the um, so there's, a, there's been obviously a lot of effort in places like Open RAN and the SDN and FB um, cycles of, of development to look at taking edge computing right deep down into the something analogous to the exchange level but the the you know be the ram for the mobile network and so on um i struggle myself to sometimes see where the where the boundary between sdn and 
these rather limited availability of some applications in these in these um, in, in these access networks okay. um, sort of lays and uh, sometimes I, I I, I question whether you know the offering of DNS is really edge computing uh, and things. So I think there's, a, I think there's, a, I think some of these things have have um, uh, adopt the titles because they're cool rather than because they're really doing something innovative out there. But what uh, you know, you've mentioned you've, you've you've done some work out in that space. What what have you seen out in the wilds of the uh, of the uh, of the RAN and the uh, the edge the, the edge computing in those types of environments? Perfect. So uh, as definitely we are looking for lower latency and lower the cost combined to deliver service, right? So in that case, we need to improve the infrastructure able to deliver what we are supposed to deliver, the latency wise, the, the cost optimization as well. So that means once it goes drive to the detail wise, uh, or come down to the infrastructure, how can we lower the cost? How can we improve the latencies? So the first touching point will be the network part. From our company-wise, we are uh, we have edge data centers. We also have global uh, cloud networks. So all this th those network part will be defined uh, consistently for the customer uh, kind of digital services to be deployed. Sometimes the, the boundaries need to be changed. Sometimes the, if there's an infrastructure uh, need to recover from a kind of a uh, fiber cut, that also to be delivered. And also within data center-wise, those different type of network need to be formed to support the service uh, kind of delivery as well. So from the network part, we definitely need to keep the whole thing to be agility enough to deliver the service. That's the first part. The second second part come to the resourcing, the computer resource. The computer is not an individual resource anymore in the in the cloud concept. It's a group of computers, a group of uh, biometrics. And in order to better coordinate, coordinate those kind of resource-wise, uh, we actually improve a lot in this case to make sure those network, op besides network to be optimized, they also the server-wise need to be optimized to support the kind of service, like enough computing power and also enough I.O. to pump in and out the, 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 those kind of bandwidth as well. Okay, perfect. Abhishek, so if you want to do, if you want to start deploying these technologies and do talk as much as you, you, you like to your own use cases, but even uh, feel free to sort of go outside of scope if that's appropriate. Um, if, you, if you're if you talking to a developer who's thinking about deploying these types of technologies or their own technologies at the edge, what would you recommend would be the sort of path? Um, are there particular partners you, you, or particular types, if you don't want to name any particular vendors, if there are particular types of partners that, that uh, would be good to work with other particular technologies, maybe open source technologies that you found uh, are, are useful. And before you take 10 seconds to think about that, what I also just say to the chat room, if you're tuned in and listening, if you're in the attendee room, do throw some questions in the chat room, do come in on the Q&A. Uh, so great, uh, so some great minds here to tap on things. So do come in. So yes, Abhishek, what, what sort of um, recommendation would you make to, uh, to, uh, to to people thinking about doing these deployments based on your experience? Um, specifically from like a streaming uh, video uh, perspective, um, you know, working with your CDNs would be a good place to start. And, um, you know, most of them have like containerized applications, uh, support containerized applications that, that uh, you know, that they can deploy easily across their uh, ops. So, um, and these could be, uh, you know, these, these would be in any, any programming language of choice. Um, so, um, so yeah, I mean, at, from our perspective, we we st start off always with the CDN, you uh, know, partner CDNs, and then you know take it from there. And, and does uh, that limit to you in any way? So you know, we, you you say in the language of your choice, is it really an open environment to run applications in any language? Right. Um, so yeah, so it has um, you know in the initial stage of adoption, uh, I mean, like uh, not not all languages were supported. Like for example, uh, we um, you know, quite a lot of uh, programming in Rust, which needed to be done. Um, you know, but but now there's more uh, support for things like TypeScript and JavaScript um, too. So um, so I, I I don't see um, you know any language limitations uh, holding people up uh, in the near future. 
um, yeah, it's 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 more a question of like uh, you know how how best you design design the system um, you know right from the end to end experience. Perfect. And Jim, sort of an inside out version of the same question to you. Uh, you know, within the scope of what Zen, Zen Layer can offer to somebody developing a media workflow, um, are you do you feel one that you you can offer a fairly one stop solution, or do you find you are often working recommending working with specific partners for different types of capabilities across those workflows? So I, I think um, as cloud. Edge computing is basically the big scope compared with the just what we have seen in public cloud. So we definitely provide the infrastructure enough to enable the, the service for the for the content delivery. But beyond that one, well, we are also actively working with uh, ecosystem, like for the container company, VM, uh, uh, company, able to integrate the whole solution to the customers as well. So I think the whole concept for the edge, I think is way bigger than the existing uh, public cloud. It's very hard, I think, uh, but today is there's the kind of a silos, dominations in the public cloud, but down the road into the edge, we will just enable the service for the customers. So that one, that where we kind of enable those kind of a, a content delivery, enable those kind of wrapped uh, containers, VM service as well. Mm. Excellent. Okay, so now I know we've got a bit of a case study, or something of a case study, certainly a deeper uh, example. Avishek, I'd like to, um, I think this will answer Sandeep's question to some extent as well. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you use, you're use using the Edge to support your Roku uh, strategy? You mentioned it in some of our precursor emails, and I think that was quite an interesting use case. And given Sandeep's question in the chat room, I think that will be pertinent. So do you want to tell us a little bit? Feel free to go a little techie on that one, I think. Sure. Um, so you know, uh, for, for supporting our um, SSAI implementation uh, on Roku platforms, um, you know, we, we needed to find a solution to have, uh, you know, also support Roku's trick play. Uh, you know, so where we needed to show like uh, image uh, image streams in 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 our HLS. Um, so and and then uh, you know there were specific require Roku expected uh, you know the, the uh, trick play uh, I I image streams to be in a specific format. You know, so essentially uh, specific HLS tags which differed a little bit from your standard uh, HLS spec. Uh, spec. So for that, you know, we implemented some logic on on our edge um, to say, you know, if the if the incoming request is from a Roku user agent, then you know, do this, you know, just do uh, essentially like manifest manipulation, uh, and then you know, and then which which would then support uh, having trick play on Roku. So th th this, yeah, this was this was a use case which we recently worked on. Hopefully, Sandy, that gives uh, that, that that gives some uh, something of an answer. Uh, Jim, have you got anything to add to that? In the same, uh, we're, we're sort of talking about examples of how to incorporate edge and cloud into video uh, video streaming workflows. So, uh, uh, in the cat, you know, in the at, at edge, we saw uh, some people try to cache more contents at the edge. So they definitely utilize different kind of algorithm there, you know, able to optimize the cache hit. Uh, so. That's what we see. In, in that way, that will optimize the content delivery, shorten the latency, but also uh, better utilize the whole infrastructure as well. So great for distribution side. Um, just one from off, off the cuff for me. Have you guys uh, got any thoughts about where edge computing might be useful for people looking at contribution workflows? So uh, remote production tools and, and systems that are actually creating uh, creating sources of content. So way before the CDN is, you know, I, I, I've certainly myself seen uh, edge computing examples of essentially Remy remote production tools being spun up locally to uh, production teams and so on. But how about you guys? What, what have you seen on that that side of the workflow on the, on the production and contribution side of the workflow? First, first come, first serve. <laughs> Or I'll choose. Okay, Jim, you go. <laughs> okay, I, I would like to jump in. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. That's a very good topic. Besides uh, content delivery wise, I think the, 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 we want to make a computer accessible to a broad scope of people. So uh, cloud definitely is on the way to do it. They, but the, the bigger problem is for the cloud computing wise is that the interactions kind of get lagging because of the latency, because of the jitter, because of the other kind of resource 
uh, com, um, a GDP as well. Edge is definitely on the way, have kind of, kind of a benefit to provide low latency interactions. So beyond that one, we're also on the way to improve the, the, those kind of service delivery. With that one, that will enable other user customers or enterprises to able to utilize those kind of abundant resource, computing resource at the edge cloud. That will help them provide those kind of better productivity rather than just utilize their local limited risk computing resources or kind of network resources to do the collaborations. That's what we're seeing. So gaming is definitely on the way. Benefit from this one, the content creation and also kind of collaboration um, enterprise networks, conferences also will help benefit from this uh, edge cloud in the case. That's what I thought. So. Yeah, excellent. Good, good, good response to Abhishek. Any, any comments about uh, where, where edge computing has a role to play in the contribution of content production, uh, remote production, those sorts of environments? So, um, you know, one area would be like um, trying to better tailor, say, um, on our on our apps, better tailor the home pages uh, for for different for different users. Um, you know, essentially incorporating logic into the edge um, to to dynamically say populate uh, tiles, home page tiles, and things like that. You know, uh, um, again, you know, ex uh, using prior uh, uh, data, essentially data-driven decisions, you know, in real time. So I can certainly see um, see that as a use case, uh, which which should immensely benefit uh, content creators. Just briefly, I want to touch on commercials. What what's uh, what, this is picking up from Jeff's question again in the chat chat room? Um, you know, what, what are the trigger points? What, what, what's a good gating indicator to to think about um, when, uh, when when trying to work out the business case? to move to edge computing? Is it, is it, is it a volumetric game? Is it a, uh, is it a dynamic? Is, is it, does it just about agility in the business? What, what, what are your thoughts? Abhishek, you're nodding now. Hopefully yeah, I mean, like, a, for us, it was like, a, you know, for the example that I gave earlier with Roku, I mean, it was essentially like, you know, we had to get that done. I mean, like, otherwise we couldn't submit our, uh, you know, build to Roku. Um, so, so that that yeah. was a pretty compelling business case. It's <laughs> a pretty uh, compelling one, yeah. <laughs> uh, but beyond that, uh, beyond that, uh, yeah, we've we've. Uh, I would say, uh, you know, you could also look at like things like um, you know your streaming and delivery costs. Um, you know, looking at like say um, your cache hit ratios across your of across your content like do you have a lot of long tail content do you have like uh, content that's always in cache uh, things like that which you can um you know which which can further inform your decision of like whether uh, it makes a business sense using uh, going with the edge um think, you know th things like that and also like uh, you know the reach uh, you know, of, uh, of your audience, I mean, like, uh, uh, is your audience distributed across, you know, uh, different parts of the globe? Do you have like multiple data centers, uh, to, you know, to support uh, that sort of like audience, so that you know, a viewer in say Australia doesn't, you know, request a video uh, coming from an origin in the US? Uh, you know, I think things of that nature. Uh, you know, I'd say you know th those would play a big factors in influencing your decision. I suppose to you, Jim, these are scaling considerations. When you've reached a point where a pop is is reaching reaching capacity, do you scale in the location or do you distribute the content further? How do you uh, how do you make decisions about where your scaling edge is, where you're uh, taking something that was once a regional a deep edge, but has become just a regional pop in a country because you've now got deeper edges deeper in the country? But what are the sort of gating levels where you decide to extend the edge? Yeah. So um, edge, well, we have a definition for the edge. Basically, we try to deliver lowest latency at the lowest cost combined together for the services. So in order to quantify it, uh, the, the latency wise, the, that's very kind of what we call this kind of art and also combined yeah. with engineering, right? Because you cannot see ultimate low latency. You cannot see one millisecond is, is good, but one millisecond means you probably can deploy that those uh, edge cloud within certain like uh, 100 kilometers. So what we balance out between the public cloud at the edge is uh, what we treat as 20 milliseconds is the most 
uh, optimized latency to able for, uh, to enable customer able to consume the contents, pro provide enough interactions while those can group those kind of computing resources together to benefit the kind of broad uh, geographic areas. So that's way uh, kind of define those uh, latency wise. The cost is definitely a uh, keep on chasing target because we know over the time the computing CPU is cost is going down, network cost is going down as well. So in order to balance out this kind of a cost uh, for the for the for the what do we call edge cloud placement, it's basically we we're looking for the technology environment. We're also looking for existing technologies to able for us to put where we are going to put the edge cloud. That's basically the, is the choice from business as and as well as technologies. For nowadays, we are I actually choose this one um, close to we call big metro area as well. We also enable this one in the certain uh, kind of geological coverage area as well. Hmm, interesting. And uh, and talk to me about um, in the video space. Have you got guys had much business? or much focus on video outside of media and entertainment specifically. So financial news, data streaming, um, you know, there's, there's, there's all sorts of other streaming, which we, which tends to be a little bit less sexy. So it tends to get a little bit less of the limelight than, uh, than perhaps other types of content. But, um, but, you know, what about uh, CCTV? What about uh, uh, other types of uh, use for monitoring and, I don't know, machine, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, fa factory installation for, what's it called? I've forgotten the name. But, you know, you, you take, take where I'm going. Outside of specifically media and entertainment, have you seen much deployment for video services? Deep at the edge. Abhishek or Jim, either of you? Am I, am I going off on one here? <laughs> Abhishek, do you want to talk about first? Um, well, um, you know, I, I, my experience has been primarily uh, been around uh, video, uh, streaming video. But um, you know, beyond just consumer-facing video, I mean, we could uh, we uh, you know could also see uh, benefits of edge, um, say on like um, you know live events, essentially, uh, be it you know uh, things like you know uh, is, is, is it say something that requires low latency live streaming uh you know uh things like you know video streams that need to go out say that need to go through a legal vetting process before they actually go on air uh you know think think you know things of that nature yeah so uh so dom back to your questions uh in that case i i, I covered i work in the area for the iot before i also have a uh, some experience in the blockchain as well so a little bit broad, but in the case, what I thought um, for the edge basically enable two ways of collaboration. That is one to offload from the cloud. That's why we call it the case, but also enable the people from, lo from local to collaborate to benefit from the, the, the cloud. Uh, the case like the IoT industry uh, in the collaborations for the manufacturers, for logistics, also um, those kind of, uh, even for the autonomous cars. So that's also benefit from the from edge cloud, edge compute. Because the all the information generated at the edge, they need to be uh, those information need to be computed to be processed somewhere. Um, the local machine, the local cars, maybe is powerful enough, but cannot be powerful for enough to process those gigantic information. If they pump those information to the cloud, to public cloud, that's too far away to be benefit from the local um, cons consumptions. So that's where edge will come in to enable the better collaborations at the. In the in the in the what we call a grid scale, mm, that interface yeah. between video and IoT is interesting. Definitely. Yeah, uh, yeah. Another case is for blockchains. So people um, are actually nowadays I enabled blockchains for the NFTs for the uh, for the cloud gaming. Maybe on the road where they enable more of those contents uh, through the blockchain as well. Uh, blockchains kind of is more broader uh, collaborations uh, networks we call. It. Uh, because they need to form consensus, they need to form those kind of agreements uh, at the global levels, or at least very broader areas. So those need kind of low latency in the in the mo most of the cases, especially for the proof of stake and all some other kind of uh, blockchain technologies. Okay, perfect. I've got two more questions I want to ask, and if there's any more you guys want to get in, oh, here we've got one. In how does 
edge help for live events? Good question, actually. Let's uh, let's let's jump straight on that one. Abhishek, any any comments on specifically how uh, how edge can help with live events from Gustavo? Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, you could put in programming logic on the edge uh, to to provide again like a better, more custom uh, personalized experience, especially uh, around live events. Um, we've uh, we've used like uh, the edge to secure our live streams for for uh, you know for a live delivery, um, like controlling the you know the, the intervals, uh, the the tokens that 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 uh, we set on on our live streams. So, uh, so these these are probably like two items that I can think of right now. Jim, any any thoughts about how Edge can help for live events? Yeah, live events include the live conference, the live games, yeah, and yeah. those are actually very uh, rapidly expanding areas. So we saw um, our customers actually uh, you deploy those kind of uh, services on top of our Edge infrastructure. Yeah, no, I mean, speaking for uh, just briefly speaking for myself, we we we've deployed um, quite large live streaming services, and uh, we certainly um, take, if you like, an edge approach to doing server side ad insertion and, uh, and so on. And I can see Abhishek nodding there. You know, it, uh, I think a lot of it comes down to things like to techniques like HLS uh, manifest manipulation and so on. That there's obviously uh, triggers from SCSI 35 markers and the likes are good good methods to go and explore if you're looking to uh, how to uh, improve your uh, your live events using, if not geographically edge uh, located uh, servers, at least logically edge located servers where they're, yeah. they're, they're at that sort of periphery. Yeah, um, you know things like you know HLS prefetching, uh, 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 those kind of things where you can you know essentially like uh, provide a more smoother streaming experience. Uh, you know, just line up, like you said, like you know, like uh, add uh, you know ad based markers, and you know just going out and fetching those uh, those ads. You know, you know just before before they actually need it. You know, so that. It's, it's it's more smoothing smoother experience. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I live, think also. It's, sorry, Jim. Go ahead. Yeah, the live is getting more exciting in those days. The, for example, in some of shopping platform, they have a live broadcast along with shoppings. So that create more interactions between you know the the host as well as the the audience. That one that one definitely the more kind of lower latency quick responses. Otherwise, the shopping kind of uh, volume will probably get impacted. The yeah, the interactive well. services yeah. definitely interactive services, and I think just another one, another one, which actually goes back to my sort of topic about contribution earlier, is, is I've, we, we, we've um, reasonably successfully used kind of edge deployments for normalizing inbound streams. So as contribution feeds are coming in, we've got them into a state where they're 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 very normalized and they're they they've got time codes, which means we can do proper synchronization. Uh, and so on and so forth. So I think it's always good to think not not to all, only think of the edge as a, a as a last mile, but also to sometimes think of it as a useful first mile tool as well. Um, so I just wanted to touch base with um, with one last uh, one last topic really, which which always rears its head when people are talking about virtualization and distributed services. And so on. I wanted to touch base a little bit more on on security. Uh, you, you, Abhishek, you mentioned um, that you've you've deployed. And you mentioned it just now as well. You've deployed uh, sort of token-based security systems. Let's just talk a little bit about security. Quite often, edge means you're operating technology in someone else's infrastructure from the old, old, olden days of on-prem technology. This is scary, and this means your data is in someone else's network. What, what methods can we do, take to make sure that this stuff is secure while we're using a third party's infrastructure? Yeah, I mean, we try to use encryption uh, and uh, you know token token based authentication as much as possible. As um, uh, speaking from like video streaming side, um, but you know, I think it's it's, it's just like any other um, so a service which you which you essentially run on the internet. I mean, like uh, it it needs to be uh, designed uh, in such a way that you know you're you're keeping security uh, front and center. Especially if it's uh, very critical to, towards your business, so um, so yeah, so 
Jim, uh, uh, security. Talk to me about security, in, 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 both in, in in the edge and in, in the Zen layer context. Yeah, security is a very big topic. It's go all the way from infrastructure up the way to the applications. So, so it's a, across multiple uh, uh, stacks. Yeah, from Zen layer wise, we when we define uh when we just kind of uh, architecture for the for the edge cloud, we always define from the bottom up the case. So when we define it, we also enable the multi-tenancy from the beginning. In the case of the enable, for example, the servers, when we enable them, the I.O. come up, we assume the, the, the multiple customers on the same networks. By, by that why we need kind of strong uh, network isolations that were in mm -hmm. more than just a typical enterprise, more than just a typical public house. So the multi-tenancy from the beginning, that will enable the security from the beginning. So that will prevent the first barrier we can enable. And also definitely, uh, uh, the, like, like I mentioned about token description, that's also need to be enabled in the hardware. And that was to improve the processing of the, 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 the encryption messages while we put, uh, kind of uh, enable some efficiencies. And uh, also in the token wise, we assume the customers, the owners were able to own the tokens rather than the third party or another part, uh, customer will be penetrated through. That's also another layer of protections. Mm. Definitely really the DDoS service also to be put in the place as well. Really interesting stuff. Um, so I, I got um, just one one nice fun, slightly upside down question to ask in a minute, but I do want to get the chat room to, uh, to try and bring it in. La, uh, last one or two questions. We've got about eight minutes left uh, uh, for the guys here, but uh, I've got got a fun one, uh, fun one to drop in now. Um, so, when is it definitely not a good idea to use edge computing? <laughs> so, especially, and, and if we can try and keep it media focused because for the streaming conference, you know, w w there must be situations where people dive in thinking this is the new, latest, greatest thing. We've got to go and deploy it. When is the uh, when is the uh, what, what, what are the scenarios to not consider edge computing? Feel free to uh, either throw that question away or come up with a silly answer. But uh, I've sprung that on the guys here. So um, Abhishek, any any thoughts about when it would be a bad idea to use or to try to use edge computing? I mean, uh, when you or I, I guess I guess when you really don't need it, uh, or something like, something like uh, my blog or something like that. I mean, like I don't, I don't, I don't want to style my blog differently based based on what uh, where the user is or like where they're coming from. So uh, yeah, um, if 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 there's no ROI on that, uh, you know, if if it's not improving latency, if it's not providing any uh, anything of value to your uh, to your consumer, uh, yeah, it's, it is a bad. So you make, I think you make an interesting point there because uh, essentially, if I read that right, it, 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 you're effectively saying that edge is really a, something that's going to be useful for premium services for for at scale services. It's not. This is not a, 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 a bit of fun for, for techies to play with. It's something people with some budget and some reason to spend that budget. Right, right. If you have the budget, yeah, by all means, go ahead. Uh, you know, it, it, it can be a fun playground. Uh, but, you know, if, if you really want to justify it, uh, you know, justify using it, uh, then, you know, you, uh, in my opinion, I mean, you'd have to justify either with uh, through lens of like, uh, you know, a better, significantly better user experience, or you know, on the other side, reduce reduce costs, and uh, you know, either through reducing the storage costs or uh, you know, the bandwidth, uh, their delivery bandwidth costs. Right, Jimmy, any 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 last thoughts there? Uh, what, what yeah, I think the keyword for Edge Cloud definitely is more like a premium service, and uh, also it's a very dynamic service as well. So the public cloud typically can store a like, huge volume of data. And uh, because the latency wise, they cannot beat the light, the speed of light. So we call it, we call it uh, like slow cloud or slow processing, mm -hmm. that's fine. So the edge in comparison with will be quick network with uh, or fast cloud in the, uh, in, the, in the comparison. So anything, any service you want, dynamic service, one thing we want more like interactions that come to the edge. Uh, if you just need static data, yeah. Cloud is, the public cloud will be the best. 
Okay, perfect. Well, listen, we, 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 we're we coming up to the end. Eric, are you out there? I'm just going to uh, summon the genie. You have to unmute yourself. I'm here. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Wonderful. That was a great discussion. Wasn't that, wasn't that a good session? That was really good. It's, it's, it's an interesting, it's always interesting bringing these very telecom technologies into the streaming media environment and, uh, and going deep with this kind of infrastructure stuff while also on the other hand bearing in mind that there's people out there who've got a real focus on video production and making good content that's engaging so right exactly well we had a good audience uh glad to see there were there were good questions and dom terrific job moderating abhishek and jim thank you so much for your insights uh i've got an amazon gift card to give away and as i roll the uh, roll the names here uh, Jeremy Martzal is the winner of the Amazon gift card. So Jeremy, watch your email. I believe next week you'll probably get an email indicating uh, how you can cash in on that. Uh, we've got another panel coming up in 30 minutes. We're going to be talking about artificial intelligence, machine learning, and how those are advancing streaming workflows. So we'll see you in about a half an hour. Thanks again.